Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning. Good works. Are you excited this morning? Yes. You come to praise him? Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, Star Wars, you know the little fellow called Yoda? It's amazing how he told Luke Skywalker. Luke was kind of disappointed because the thing that Yoda was teaching him, he couldn't quite get it. So he got frustrated. Yoda was so full of wisdom that he told him, said, Luke, what you need to do is to forget the thing that you have learned and let me teach you the way of a fighter. The Lord has told us, forget those things we took behind. And what? Press toward the mark of Christ of the high call. We have to make up in our mind that I'm going to forget those things which are behind. That I'm going to look unto him who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Because I know the greater one lives on the inside of me. And I know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. We have to uplift our way of thinking. We got to come up higher. We got to think the way Christ thinks. And allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us into all truth. Because he is the way, the truth, and what? We got everything we need. We got all that we need on the inside of us. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit lives and dwells on the inside of us. So why are we complaining? Why are we walking like we are defeated? Why are we walking like we're discouraged or baptized in lemon juice? When that should be a, the joy of the Lord is your what? Is it your strength? Is it your strength? Yes. Then don't fool me now. Don't tell me one thing and do something totally different. The joy of the Lord is your what? I know the world said fake it till you make it. But we don't have to fake it here because it's real. And when it flows out of you, everybody else will say the same thing. Praise God. Can you praise him this morning? Can you give him the glory? Can you give him the honor? Can you open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. This is the day you have made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a great God. He's alive. And he's doing well. And he wants us to have your what? Bottom of life. Man, that's, that's a great life. That you have to worry about anything. You just learn to just rest in him. The reason why we don't rest in him is because we try to do things our own. But like I said, Yoda told Luke, forget those things that you have learned and let me teach you. Are we going to allow the Lord to teach us through the Holy Spirit to live the abundant life? Can you smile this morning? Can you smile this morning? Now, nobody's been baptized in lemon juice this morning. You don't have a sour taste in your mouth. Please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we just laugh? Can we just laugh? <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to fake laugh. The devil don't know if you're laughing or not. But if we just laugh, man, the jaw will come. You forget all your problems. You begin to think of the goodness of God. Because he's good. Yeah. Can we laugh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Listen, I'm telling you, laughing is good for you. Yes. yes. There's somebody. Laughing is 
like medicine? Hallelujah. We might be taking too much world medicine. We probably just need to just laugh. Hallelujah. Just laugh. Just laugh at the devil. He will ask you, what you laughing at? Hey, I'm laughing at you. What you laughing at me for? Because I know you defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Listen, we're here for one purpose. To lift up the name of Jesus. And to give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We praise him today like this might be your last time here on earth. Praise him today. Give him all the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because God is worthy to be praised. I don't want no rock crying off of me. I'm going to clap my hands. Thank God for my hands. Hallelujah. Now you might not see me there. But I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to lift them up. Are you ready to praise him today? Amen. Now I'm going to listen and see. Are you ready now? Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus. You ready? Ready. Man, are you ready? I think they're ready. Yes. Are y'all ready to praise him? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah, brother. God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity, Lord, for us to come in your presence. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us to all truth. Father, we commit this service into your hands, God. We ask that the Holy Spirit will have his way. Move as you see fit. We thank you for our pastor, Pastor Gary Turner, and for the anointing that rests on his life. Lord, use him for your glory. Even as words come out of his mouth, God, they will not return to you, Lord, but they will accomplish and profit into the thing of which you send it. For you watch over your word to perform it. To you alone, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 And truly, Lord, we give you the glory, because indeed you are worthy. Amen. 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 Of the praise, amen. Well, welcome to October. Can you believe that? October already, amen. And yet, God is faithful, amen. amen. He continues to be faithful, He continues to be good, He continues to keep us, He continues to carry us, amen. And that is why we lift our hands to Him, hallelujah. We lift our hands up and we open our hearts unto you, Lord, hallelujah. We lift your name high until every other name. Every other circumstance, every other issue fades away because there is no name higher than your name, Jesus. So we lift you high. Did you come to lift him this morning? Are you going to lift his name with us this morning? Hallelujah. For there is power in that name. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus.
need to be moved by the name of Jesus. Get it on your mind. Hallelujah.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus is truly Lord, isn't he? Jesus is Lord. So we bless him this morning. And we glorify him this morning. At the mention of his name. There are a lot of names. As a matter of fact, if you want to, you can probably purchase a book of names. There's a name like Gary. There's a name like Stephanie. There's a name like Brenda and Joe and Terry and Benson. And many other names. But there's no name like Jesus. A name that's known all over the world. Everybody has heard that name. I've been was in India once, and you know they don't praise God in India. They worship uh, Hindu, uh, you know, whoever the God is over there. But I saw a sign over there that said, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And truly, he is Lord. Amen? Amen. So we bless him this morning. If you will, take a seat just for a moment. Just for a moment. I'm going to get you back up. But I, 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 uh, I want to bring to your attention a couple of things. One is, uh, Pastor Cornyn is, uh, has been posted. And my topic this month, and you know, Pastor Cornyn is just a compilation of inspirational thoughts. And I'll let somebody come tell me what to write. Somebody makes a suggestion to me. I said, no, I won't let God tell me what he wants me to say to his people because God knows better than anybody. Amen. And so God led me to write on uh, constructive feedback is transformational. So when you get a chance to read it, I think it will inspire you. And when I went to make sure, because I always make sure the post is out there on the first of the month, I saw something that got my attention. I'm not on Facebook myself personally, but through the church Facebook page, I saw something. I saw this couple celebrating 44 years of marriage. 44 years of marriage. And I thought, wow. You don't see that too much. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit's been been talking to me about ministering on family and family values and at some point, probably soon, I'm going to start preparing to minister on family values because it's something that we've lost. You know, there are too many, too many single head of households. There are too many people who haven't kept their vows and, and honored their vows and, and fulfilled their vows and they didn't take them as serious as they should have because the Bible says, to death do us part. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we find ourselves in a society today where there's not a lot, well, there's still a lot of families, but there are still some family structures that are different. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we need to get back to the family values. When I read sometime in the Old Testament, it says, don't move the old landmarks, the ancient landmarks that the fathers have established. That's right. I know what that means in terms of boundaries and things like that, but there's another interpretation that I have. My interpretation of that, too, is that don't throw away the things that have been established as boundaries for our lives. There are some ancient things that have been established that you and I ought to value, that we ought to hold as keepsakes in our hearts because God established them. Doesn't matter that they were in the Old Testament, they're still valuable to us. So don't, don't move the old landmarks. Don't let people tell you that marriage is, is not for the day that we're in 2023 and things are different. Just live together, just shack up and do everything you want to do. No, don't move the old ancient landmarks. Amen. 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 So, so getting back to what I was about to say, though, is that when I saw this, 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 this announcement, I thought, I know those people. I know who they are. There's Benson and Terry Hewitt. I want you to come stand right here in front. I want you all to see you on YouTube and Facebook. You by the way, good morning, Facebook and YouTube. Good to have you with us this morning as well as those of you that are with us. I didn't know it had been 44 years. I've known them about 25 years. Y'all come stand right here in front of the camera. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. This is, this is, this is the truth. Ever since I've known Benson, this is what he said about Terry. Mm -hmm. My queen. my queen. He's always called her his queen. I don't care. I don't care where they are. Mm -hmm. He's gonna open the door for his wife. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's gonna make sure she gets in that car first. He's always done that, and she's always waiting for him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just want to say to you all, congratulations on 44 wonderful years of marriage. I truly believe it's wonderful years of marriage. Here's why I say this: Terry accepts him for who he is, and he accepts her for who she is. That's right. 
I've never seen like this. You know, I know people have quarrels. I know people have disagreements. It's impossible not to have disagreements. But I've never seen them act like they want to be mad at each other. <laughs> they always seem to be uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a place of, of uh, tolerating each other, long suffering, which is what God says to us. And in any marriage, for any marriage to be successful, that's right. it, there has to be some long suffering that's that come right. along with that's it. There right. has to be some forbearance right. that come along with it. There has to be the, the, the first Corinthians chapter 13 that goes along with it. Amen? Amen. So I just want to say to y'all, congratulations. Thank God you. bless you. And wish you many, many more. Amen. So this morning, uh, as I was, I had prepared my, my teaching, and uh, I was sitting down, and I was eating breakfast, and you know, I'm a, I am an oatmeal lover. So usually on mornings where I don't eat two meals, I usually have oatmeal and some turkey bacon and some fruit, because I know, you know, today I'm only gonna have two meals, so I get something to count. It's gonna stick on my sides and last me for the count of the day. And so I was sitting down, I prepared my oatmeal, I had it just the way I wanted. I put my brown sugar and I started beating the bowl like I always do, stir it up, put a few walnuts in it. And I was getting ready to eat. And the Holy Spirit said something to me. He said, I want you to change your message. I said, well, I don't argue when the Holy Spirit tells me to do something. I just obey. And, but I also looked at the clock. I knew how much time I had to eat prepare based on what he was saying, but when the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, he prepares it. That's right. He's already has it ready. He's just going to download it in you, download it in, in me. Amen. So I was, I was sitting there and he brought to my mind this. I uh, try to eat healthy. And so uh, this week I prepared some, some salmon uh, for two days and some uh, salad and baked sweet potatoes. Mm. So I, uh, I reached in the refrigerator as I put the, you know, the leftovers in the microwave. I looked in the refrigerator to get my butter. And I reached in the refrigerator and got my butter. Uh, I pulled it out and I scooped in and I got my butter and I put it on the sweet potato. And I thought something, I know what the Holy Spirit said to me, you gotta check that date. And so I thought for a moment, okay, the date can't be that old. But when I looked at it, it tells me the lot number. It tells me the time it was made. And then it says, best used by December 2020. Now, I could be wrong, but this is December, I mean, this is October 2023. So this brother is almost three years, three years old. <laughs> so I took the butter out of my baked sweet potato, scooped it out. And all the portions that had touched. That's right. Because so I know what bacteria might go in my body. I know I got a couple of scientists in here. I've got one on there and one over there. Right. Uh, I scooped it out and, and I went on to eat my sweet potato. But I started wondering why was this butter in the refrigerator so long? The reason why I was in the refrigerator so long is because I kept putting something in front of it. I kept going and buying the light butter. Yeah. And when I bought the light butter, because this is, this is, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> But I bought the light butter, and every time I bought the light butter, I put it in front of it and kept pushing, it's not butter, back. Yeah. Until the point where I ran out of the light butter, That's right. and now I got the, I can't believe it's not butter, and I'm getting ready to use it. But what am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to say to you that sometimes in our lives, that things have to be used before they expire. Yes. There are certain things that have to be used before they expire, and the Holy Spirit said to me, that's why I want you to minister on. I want you to minister on six things that cause us to fail to be useful before our expiration. See, you and I have to understand this, that each one of us has an expiration date. We all, we all have an expiration date. We may not, may not be today, may not be tomorrow, maybe five years from now, it could be next week. We don't know, but every, each one of us has an expiration date. So if you would stand, please, as we read the word of God this morning. I want to thank the media team this morning because I text them at 908, 910. And I said, I hate to do this to you, but the Holy Spirit just gave me this 10, 15 minutes ago. And the uh, response was, let the Holy Spirit have his way. Amen. Whatever you want to do, let him have his way. Amen. They said, even if you have to change it during the church service, right. we'll change it during the church service. Amen. Whatever he says, do be obedient to him. So I appreciate I appreciate that. You got people that will 
when we're with you and supporting you and not say, no, oh, I can't believe you. We're changing. That's a last minute. <laughs> we had this set up for yesterday. <laughs> That would agree with my spirit. <laughs> Made me wonder if God had really spoken to me. That's right, God. That's right. Matthew 6, chapter, verses 25 through 33. That's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or, and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to them than they are, to him than they are? Can all your words add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and gone into the fire tomorrow. He will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. We said seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He's saying make God a priority. Don't push him back on the back shelf but bring him to the forefront. Father we thank you for your blessings upon us each and every day. We thank you that you move mountains and and even those that you don't move, you give us the strength to climb. We thank you, Lord God, that even during the valley times that you're with us and you're fighting for us, you fight the battle. So we bless you, Lord God, that as we stand here today, we stand here as a humble people before you, knowing, Lord God, that we were sinners and we are sinners and we're saved by grace. So we thank you, Father. Jesus, we thank you for the finished work on the cross, your passion for the cross. And Lord God, I thank you now that you hide me behind the cross. It's not about me, but all about you. Let no flesh glory in your presence. It is the spirit that quickly, the flesh part of nothing, and the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. In Jesus' name, Jesus. let the church say amen. Hey. You may be seated. Again, my sermon topic is, I want to cover six things that cause us to fail to be useful before our expiration. Make God's kingdom a priority. Make God's kingdom a priority. And he would take care of the small stuff. God would take care of the small stuff. There are a lot of things that, that we put in front of God because we believe that those are the most important things. But if we make God the priority, he'll take care of all the small things because to him, they are truly small things. They're minor things. Amen? Amen. When uh, I am asked to pour into young businessmen lives, they ask me to mentor them or ask me questions about how to be successful in corporate America. They're looking for some secret sauce. They're looking for something at, uh, in the work environment that will help them succeed. But I always say this to them, seek God's kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be added. Amen. I always tell them, let God be first in your life. Let God be first in your life. Amen. Work hard, but keep God first. Give to Caesar what's due Caesar, but keep God first. Go to the book of John, 1 John, 2nd chapter. Look at verses 15 and 16. <coughs> I'm reading New King, uh, New Living Translation. It says, do not love this world. Do not love this world and all the things it offers. For when you love the world, you, not, you, you do not have the love of the Father in you. The love of the world will take the love of God, remove the love of God, diminish the love of God because your focus is on the, the things of the world. For the Lord, for the wor world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Physical pleasure, a craving for everything you see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. Amen? 
these are not from the Father, but are of the world. So the first thing that we see when we start talking about uh, making God a priority in our life and, and, and making our life useful before our expiration is, don't love the world. These things can cause us to fail to love God the way we should. And so we love the physical things. We love, we love the material things. We love what feeds our flesh and makes us feel good. We love being able to say we got this and we got that and, and it makes us feel good. And then if we get power and authority, it makes us feel like we're somebody. Amen. It's amazing how those things, and you can easily see that they're worldly things. They're not godly things. Yeah. These are worldly things. Yeah. Have nothing have nothing to do with God whatsoever. But they're things that appeal to us that will make us happy. We believe that they will make us happy. So we're in pursuit of those things. We'll work our, ourselves to death to achieve those things. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? But what we don't understand is that they just bring momentary happiness, temporary happiness. That's all they do. Joy comes from the Lord. Yeah. Happiness is something that lasts just for a moment, mm -hmm. but joy lasts with us forever. Amen. You can get a car today. That's right. You can get $10,000 tomorrow. That's right. You can get a brand new house. That's right. But I want to tell you something. Just as soon as you receive those things, within just a matter of days, a matter of months, even a matter of a year, they don't even mean the same thing to you. They just brought you some happiness, some level of happiness, a measure of happiness, but there's no permanent joy associated with them. And that very same thing, that very thing, will keep you from not knowing the true joy that comes from a relationship with Christ. Amen. Amen. So it's not about how much money we, we have. It's good to have money. I won't tell you it's not good to have It's good to have money. It's good to have some money in your pocket. I, listen, I'm like Paul. I know how to be. I've been a base. I've been. I've been. I've been, with, I've been a bound. I know how. I know how it feels. And so, there's nothing wrong with having money except the love of money. It's the root of all evil. And see, what we do is what we don't understand is that we have to be careful about these things because they can cause us to live uh, a life of sinfulness because we're so in pursuit of those things that we don't care about anything else. And whatever it, it takes to get them, that's what we'll do. Amen? Matthew 6, 19, 21. Go there, please. I want to I want to see my children successful. We all parents want to see our children successful. Don't we? We, want to make, we want to make sure they're successful. We want to see them get promoted. We want to see them make a lot of money. We want to see all that. We want to see them live a good life. But I always say this to them. Keep the kingdom of God first. Yeah. Keep his kingdom first. Amen? Oh, yeah. Amen. And, and, and verse 19, Matthew 6, 6 chapter, verse 19 says, this, Don't store up your treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Oh, yeah. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Mm. Wherever your treasure is, there, the desires of your heart will be also. Amen. If you place your value here on the things of this earth, right. your heart's going to be here on this earth, and you're right. not on the things above. Amen. And God's trying to get us to see that when we do it, the clock is ticking. Yes, the clock is ticking, and we got everything else first, and we put, we put this in front mm -hmm. of God. So God's back on the back shelf. Like I had that bug on the back shelf. He's back on the back shelf, and I got something. You got something in front of it, yeah. in front of him. And he doesn't want to have anything in front of him. Our treasure should be in heaven. Yes. Right. It's okay to, you know, I prepare for retirement. That's right. Prepare for retirement. You need to prepare for retirement. We need to have emergency money. We need to have all those things. Those things are important, but they can't overshadow yes. our relationship with Christ. Amen. Can I get somebody to say amen? Amen. 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 That's number one. Yes. Number two is our failure to acknowledge God in all of our ways. Mm -hmm. We need to let God direct us and guide us every step of the way. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5 says, and 6 says, says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. Yes. Amen? So we're not trusting him the way we should, and consequently we make mistakes because we're leaning on our own understanding. Yes. On our own understanding. So let me ask you this question. Since when, since when, did we find ourselves knowing more than what God knows? The psalm says that his understanding is infinite. 
He's the omniscient God. He's the God of all knowing. And he's the God that from knew from back then to the future, he knows everything. everything. He knows everything that's going to happen before it happens. Amen. The end from the beginning. He has all wisdom. He has all knowledge. But yet we fail to acknowledge him in all of our ways. We fail to trust in him. We're leaning to our own understanding or we're leaning to the understanding of somebody else. Amen. Proverbs 20, 26 says this, that he who trusts, listen to this, he who trusts in the Lord in his heart is a fool. You study the book of Proverbs, <laughs> those last Proverbs of 24, 25, 26, they mention a lot about fools. He said that because there are a lot of fools. And when he says, fool, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. Yeah. So they don't even acknowledge God, right? But now they have a fool is somebody who's dull. Somebody, it goes on to say, if you look at that word, it says a fool is somebody who's stupid. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't ever call anybody stupid. I think that's a horrible word, but the Bible calls it stupid. It says that, 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 that when we trust in our own heart and our own mind, we trust in our minds, mm -hmm. that we are stupid, that we're fools. Yeah. So he's giving us a warning. Don't be a fool. Amen. You know, trust in me, acknowledge me, and let me direct your path. Let Amen. me direct your path. Amen. 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 And so I believe just knowing who God is and knowing what God is capable of, I'm going to go to him and get understanding. Amen. Amen. Because if the clock is ten, uh, ticking, I want to make sure that every step that I take Every move that I make is the right stuff. Amen? Amen. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. So if he can give me wisdom on what I should do and what I shouldn't do, why wouldn't I trust him? Mm. Now, I don't want to fall into a pit. Amen. I was watching YouTube the other day. You know, I love YouTube. I watched, you see my kids take me stay off of YouTube, but there's a lot of value on YouTube, too. I watched YouTube the other day, and this kangaroo in Australia, there was a ditch about this wide. And the kangaroo just hopped and hopped right in. Well, if somebody told him don't go there, he wouldn't have hopped in. It took them two or three hours to get that kangaroo out there. Out there. They, his body fit perfectly in there. They couldn't widen it because they couldn't dig around because they had space in there. And so they had to take a little bit of hands and paw them and pull them up and keep pulling and turning, pulling and turning. Listen, God says, you won't hop into that little ditch if you ask me. Because I've guided you the right way. Yeah. And that way, nobody has to come and pull your little paws out. Right. <laughs> Y'all going to be with me otherwise. <laughs> Amen. He said, don't be stupid. Don't be dumb. Amen. He said, don't hop in a ditch when you don't have to hop in a ditch. I can save that, that time that you, that you cause yourself to be in misery. Because time is just ticking away. At some point, Desperation day is going to come. Right. That's number two. Number three is this. Proverbs 27 1 says this. Don't boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what tomorrow may bring. Mm -hmm. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So don't, don't start talking about tomorrow. It hadn't even come yet. Let's just focus on today. Yeah. Let's just focus on what's necessary today. Let's just focus on the important things of today. What's important today and not talk about tomorrow. Let's just stay right. Let's stay in the here and now. Let's just be present. Amen. Now, 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 the Bible doesn't tell us not to plan because in, in Proverbs 16, 33, it says, commit your will to the Lord and he shall establish your thoughts. So if you commit your plans, commit them to him, let him establish your thoughts. Amen. So there's nothing wrong with, with planning, but get God's blessing on it. Amen. And don't brag about it. Amen? Amen. James 14, 4, 13 says this, when you make plans, make sure that you're in the Lord's will. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're in the Lord's will. Yes, when you're making plans, make sure you're in the Lord's will. I don't want to be in my own will yes, because if I'm on my own will, I'm in my own mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I know my mind is, is, is limited. Your minds, your minds are limited. But, but if, I, if, I, if I trust God and, and make sure that I'm in his will, then God's going to keep me from going in places that I shouldn't go in. He's going to direct me. He's going to order my steps. Lord, should I do this? Yeah. If it's in your will, tell me if I should do this. And if I'm not in your will, then Lord, don't let me do it. Keep me from those things. Mm -hmm. And too many times we're doing things and we're not in the Lord's, we're not in the Lord's will. And time is, is just slowly clicking away. I remember once I got ready to take a job and I just got saved. 
And my wife said to me, she said, you take that job, she said, you're going to be traveling all the time. She said, I don't believe God will give you a job where you're traveling all the time. You just got saved. I would think God would give you a job where you're sitting on his word. She said, I don't believe that's the Lord's will. Mm -hmm. You know, I just got saved. So I, I, I agree with her. Mm -hmm. She was right. She, she was absolutely right. I was in the Lord's will. See, I was, and here's how I know I was in the Lord's will. Because I went on and had success where I was working. See, if I'd been outside the Lord's will, I wouldn't have had success. I would have been in a place where I was miserable. but had to change jobs all the time. See, see, it's okay to change jobs. I'm not saying don't change job. Just make sure whatever job you change to make sure you're in the Lord's will. Amen. Whatever you do, make sure you're in the Lord's will. If you decide today uh, 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 you're going to invest in some property, you're going to invest in some stocks or bonds, make sure you're in the Lord's will. Amen. There's nothing wrong with investing. Just make sure you're in the Lord's will. Amen. So when you're in the Lord's will, things will run so much more smooth than it would if you were not in his will. Amen? Amen? And see, a lot of times what we do is we, we look at it and say, okay, I'm successful, but you could be more successful. I don't want, and you don't want, a measure of God's success. You want the fullness of his success. The fullness. So it's something about having half of something and something about having the whole of something. I'd rather have the whole and the fullness of it than part of it. Amen? Amen. So he's a God that multiplies, so he's not going to give us halves. He's going to give us holes. He didn't give Israel half of the promised land. He gave Israel all of the promised land. Amen? Because they were in his perfect will. So we want to be in God's perfect will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go to the book of, we'll stay in the book of Matthew. Go down to verse uh, 25. It says this. This is number four. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or, and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant a harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all of your words, can all of your words add a single moment to your life? <laughs> Number four is don't worry about life, God has us. Amen. See, God has us. So we, if we keep God first, yeah. keep him as the priority, we don't have to worry about life. Amen. We don't have to worry about, about things uh, that we go through through all the darkest storm. Amen? Amen? Amen. Through all the valleys. God's going to extend his hand to us. Whatever we may go through, God has us. Amen. God is going to keep us. Amen? He's going to take care of us. So stop trying to make it happen because when you do, you make mistakes. And it costs you time and energy. So stop worrying. I, I don't know about you, but I can't remember a time that I can honestly say that God didn't provide all of my needs. I can't remember a time I can look back on my life where I say God didn't bring me through. Yeah, it was a difficult time. Yeah, it's been difficult. At recent times it was difficult, but God is yet bringing me through. So I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna worry. I can't worry. I got to stay focused on God and making Him the priority in my life. That's God, true. what is that you're gonna have me to do with the rest of my life? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I got a past, I got a present, but what about the rest of my life? What are you gonna have me to do with the rest of my life? And I'm not gonna worry about things. Most of the time, you worry about something. I was telling somebody this recently. When you spend time worrying about it, when you get through it, you look back on it, you say, it "Wasn't that bad after all?" It really wasn't bad as it seemed. But when you're going through it, boy, it's like all the anxiety that you're under, all the pressure that you're under. You're like, how in the world am I going to get through it? And you get through it, you look back and you say, oh, it wasn't that bad. But I want to tell you something. Worry doesn't add to your life. It takes away from your life. Let me tell you how I know it takes away from your life. Anytime you have anxiety, all you need to do is just measure your heart rate. You got, they got watches now. They can, you can just press a button. It'll tell you what your heart rate is. Yeah. My sitting heart rate is 63, 64. But when I'm walking, I'm running, I'm working out, it goes up to like 104. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's a change, it detects it. Yeah. Well, I want to just tell you this, that when you worry about stuff, sometimes just press your button on your, on your watch. <laughs> See what your heart rate is. It's gone from 64 sitting rate to probably 100 or more. Because why? Something is going on in your body. I want to tell you what worry does. Worry starts to erode your organs in your body. Amen. You're like a pebble in a brook. Uh, the water just goes over. After a period of time, it gets smooth. 
It could be in that water, it can be rough, but it stayed there for a while. You pick that pebble up, it's smooth as a baby behind. Totally smooth. Amen. Right? Well, that's what's happening. Erosion is taking place in our bodies, it's taking place in our kidneys, it's taking place in our heart and our arteries. It's taking place in our pancreas, our liver. It's taking place in so many places in our body. And then we start wondering what is wrong with me. We've been worrying too much. That's right. You keep God first, you don't have to worry. Amen. You know, I, the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not come, but mine through God through pull down a stronghold. So if God is my shield and my buckle, if he's my high tower, he's my refuge, when I start to see things that are attacking me, I'm going to run into that place. Amen. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm going to run in a secret place on the most high. Yeah. I'm going to bow down the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. I'm going to say to the Lord that he is my God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So God will extend his hand and, and uh, help us and, and pull us out. Even as he extended his hand to Peter as he was on that water and the storm was coming and he was looking at his circumstances. When he should have been looking at Jesus, stop looking at your circumstances and look at Jesus. Amen. Focus on him. That's number four. Number five, stop procrastinating. Stop putting all things that you know you should be doing for God. Stop putting those things off. Amen. Stop saying, I'm, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Oh, I'm, I'm going to start doing this tomorrow. I'm going to start doing this. Here's my plan. I'm going to write it down on my calendar. And I'm going to start doing it on this day. This is what I'm going to start doing. Yeah, we just procrastinate. Yeah. Procrastination is the enemy for Christians. Amen. It's, the, it's the enemy. And what, what the enemy wants to do is put that spirit of procrastination on us. When we walk and fast and moving good, we slow down like this. <laughs> Barely move because he got that spirit of procrastination on us. Not only on our bodies, but our minds. I have you ever been sitting on a, on a chair and you're comfortable? And you say, I'm going to get up and go get something. <laughs> and you just keep sitting there. I did that yesterday watch, watching the football game. I said, I'm going to get up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I did that two or three times. I'm going to get up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get up right away. I procrastinated. I finally got up, but by then, so much time had passed. I could have done it and been, and been through with it. And so many times what we're doing is we're afraid to move. God says move. And he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, he said, move. He said, go to this place I'm going to show you. What Abraham did was Abraham got up and started moving. He started walking. He didn't, he didn't know exactly where he was going, but he got up and started walking. He didn't procrastinate. He was going to say, wait, I'm going to let God tell me a little bit more. Then I'll start moving. No, when God says move, start moving. Amen. Don't procrastinate because procrastination is an enemy. And that may be some risk. And you're moving. Mm -hmm. But there's also a great reward. Amen. 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 Go to Philippians. We're going to come to the sixth one. Philippians, the second chapter. Go to verse 5. It says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. That's the New Living Translation version. Amen? The same mindset, uh, attitude that Christ had. So here's what we need to do. This is what caused us to fail. We need to change our mindset. We have a different mindset when it comes to the things of God. Amen? And the way you develop a different mindset is you develop that different mindset it comes through the study of the word of God. Amen. I ask myself sometimes when I go out and play golf, it takes me, we start at 8 o'clock, we're going to finish at 12. That's when we have a good round. <laughs> if they lose them balls, listen, if they lose them balls all over the place. Oh, <laughs> if they lose them balls all over the place, it takes too much time. It adds another 30 minutes to it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you got, those guys got to get better. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so what we have to do though is we have to have a different mindset. Amen. And but it comes through the Word of God. If I'm spending four hours playing golf, I ask myself, Am I devoting four hours to study? It's something different about going out and having a good time playing golf and sitting there for four hours studying God's Word. Even though I'm, I don't do four hours at one time. And, and, and like, like last night when I was reading, uh, about 10 o'clock, uh, the screen was watching me. I wasn't watching the screen, the screen was watching me. I had been studying for a couple of hours, and all of a sudden I found myself, my head, uh, I thought I almost got uh, whip lash. So my head was boom. <laughs> my head flopped on the ice pack, put on the back of my neck, my head was bobbing all the way. Isn't it amazing how we can go out and have a good time and enjoy it? 
But when it comes to studying the Word of God, we don't want to put that kind of time in. But that's what's going to develop us. I never read anyone in the Bible where it said there's a ball in heaven. There's a golf club in heaven. There's a, 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 a golf green in heaven. I wish there was. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? But what I do know is that God is in heaven and Christ is in heaven. I do know that, that, that there's a heaven where we're all going to rejoice someday. We're all going to be among the angels praising God. So it makes sense to take for me to spend more time, you more, spend more time studying God's word on something that's going to last forever yeah. as opposed to something that I can't take right. with me to hell. Right. I can take God's word with me to hell. Right. I can take that word. It's going to always be in my heart. I can take it because it's feeding my spirit. My spirit is going to go. Amen. 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 So we got to develop the Amen. mind of Christ. Uh, through the study of God's word. Amen? And 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 then also make sure that that uh, because Christ's mind was always on doing God's work, we need to make sure our mind is always on doing God's work. Amen? Amen. So we should prioritize kingdom work over what I call worldly adventures. <laughs> worldly adventures. <laughs> the world, they're just worldly adventures. I mean, it, it, it's good, they're adventures. But they're just what they are. They're just something that just laugh. It's just an adventure. Adventure is something that you go on and you leave. But God's kingdom lasts forever. Amen? Go to the book of uh, Matthew. I'm coming to a close. Go to the book of Matthew. 25th chapter of Matthew. Verses 14 through 26. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by a story of a man going on a long trip. He talked together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from the trip, his trip and called them to give an account of how they used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward and five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I've earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibility. Let's celebrate together. The servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. Here's your money back. God has given to every man something, every woman something that they can use on this earth. You got something in you that God has deposited into you that you can use here on this earth, something good. And some people make the best of what God has given to them. Some people will. Some people are doing great exports for the Lord. Everybody's not going to do the same thing. Some people will just sit on the sidelines and just watch and just don't want to take any risks. Yes, I'm just comfortable being where I am. I just come to church, but I don't want to do anything more than that. Let me just stay comfortable. Let me just sit on the sidelines. Let them be a gazing star. I won't be involved in anything related to God's kingdom. We all have an hourglass. Every last one of us has an hourglass. Let's imagine an hourglass and it's turned upside down. From the time that we were born, it was turned upside down. The sand just slowly drained to the bottom. That's our lifeline. That's our time that we have on the earth. It's just slowly 
draining. We don't know how much time we have. I don't know. I'm 69. I don't know if I got another 10, 15, 20. I don't know. But what I do know is this, that our glass is running out. My hourglass is running out. Your hourglass is running out. It is. And listen, once it runs out, there's no turning it back upside down and starting all over again. When it's over, it's over. The man died and he said, let me go back and tell my brothers, let me warn them. He said, no, just no, you had your chance. Let them hear what Moses had to say. They didn't hear. If they don't hear, it's their fault. There's going to come a day, each and every one of us, like each servant had to give an account, God's going to judge us for the things that we've done. At some point, we're going to have to give an account. Here's what you and I got to stop doing. We got to stop making excuses. We got to stop putting the things in the back. Put God in the back. And put everything in front of God. And then one day you wake up and you say, oh, my time has run out. I missed it. I, I, I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have done more of this. I should have done more of that. I should have given more. I should have worked more. I should have said more. I should have done more. But I didn't. My top, my clock has, has run out. God has deposited something into each and every one of us. Your gift may not be my gift. My gift may not be your gift. But God has given us something. And what God is saying to us today is, prioritize me. Prioritize me. Make me. Make me priority in your life. Not your job. Not your husband. Not your children. Not your cars, not your house, not anything. Make me the priority. Let people see me in you. Amen. Let my glory be seen in you. Yeah. You be the light of the world. You be the salt of the earth. Stop putting me in the back. Too many of us are putting him in the back. We need to push him to the forefront of our lives so that God will be blessed and God will be glorified. Amen. Can we give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Come on, y'all do better. Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Amen. 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 Because your arms are open wide unto us, Lord. We thank you, Lord.
remember is God who has richly blessed us. Amen. Father, we thank you for these elements. We thank you for the elements that we are about to partake of. Oh, yeah. We do this in remembrance of you, O oh God. Oh, yeah. The bread that represents your broken body, mm. the fruit of the vine that represents your shed blood. You did all for us. A love that was unfailing, a love that's still unfailing. Your word declares that I, the Lord God, I change not. You loved them then, and you love us now. You haven't changed. Your love never changes, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that your word declares that it is an unfailing love. Unfailing means that it will never, ever let us down or never, ever let us go. It's always there. Always there for us. Help us to understand and to see that it's an everlasting love, that it is an unfailing love, that it is a love, oh God, that only you can love us with. So we're grateful today, Father, for who you are in our lives. We declare and decree this day, oh God, that you are the priority. Those that are sitting under my voice, those that will hear this a video, see this video later, under my voice, oh God, we thank you that you will, if not already, become the priority in their lives and our lives. We set aside those things that mean absolutely nothing, the carnal things, and Lord, we move to the forefront of your kingdom and your righteousness. And everything else will be added to us. Father, from the sole of our feet to the crown of our heads, pour your oil upon us. Your oil of gladness. Your oil of God. Whether there's sadness, bring joy into our hearts, O oh God. Where there's a need for deliverance, bring deliverance. Where there's a need, O oh God, for a wound to be closed, let that wound be closed. Where there's a need for fulfillment, let there be fulfillment, O oh God. As only you can do. A man or a woman that can't do it, but you, O oh God. A car, a house, a money can't do it. But only you, O oh God. We thank you, Father. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. We say Hosanna in the highest. We say you're Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. At the mention of your name, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen.
our opportunity to give into your kingdom. We ask God to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that's our real love to receive. Oh, yeah. Jesus, as our high priest, we ask that you take these tithes and offerings, carry them before the Father, worship the Father with them, that they may come before him as a sweet smell. We cover with your word, Deuteronomy 26, verses 1 through 19, Malachi 3, 10 through 12, 2 Corinthians, verses 9 through 15. Father, we have believed that we have received every need is met, every want is fulfilled, and every desire is satisfied. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 Just for us. Just for us. Just for us. 
from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in peace and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may partake of the bread. In the same way, he took a cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you think, as often as you drink it. You may drink of the blood. Let us all stand for dismissal. <coughs> Thank you for our guests this morning. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. Well, God's a good God, isn't he? Amen. He is a good God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. The Bible declared, was man that thou visits him, or the son of man that thou visits him. God cares for us. He visits us. Amen. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the pearl of his glory with exceeding joy. To all the wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and